Hi guys, yeah, we're joined by uh, Eddie Donmez here. I thought I'd uh, bring you in, Eddie, because I wanted to get your views. Basically, what we have here is we've got US stocks down um, sharply again today. This is actually the sixth straight down day in a row. And actually, you'd look at it and say it's pretty much the biggest down sort of period we've had on stocks since the, the kind of COVID pandemic blew up back in, in quarter quarter one, quarter two of 2020. So um, a lot of the press are kind of pinning this situation on this idea that yields are rising. Um, can you explain this? Why, why, why are yields rising? Yeah, I, I think um, it's a less sinister thing than people think, uh, to be honest. I think the actual, when you hear inflation, it's you know normally associated with a kind of bad thing. It's a kind of dirty word. People get scared scared of it. But I think for for this reason, you know, we've got lockdowns easing, uh, you know, global growth about to return. Uh, as you mentioned, lots of money ready to be put to work. And I think it's actually the expectation of global synchronized growth um, as we kind of emerge from the ashes of this kind of COVID uh, pandemic. And actually, economists at Goldman are expecting a 6% uh, global GDP number in 2021. And that's actually the strongest in, in 30 years. So that's that's a pretty pretty hefty number. So yields are rising um, because of this synchronized global growth story. Okay, and how um, do you think though that okay six percent upside for GDP in twenty twenty one? I mean, it doesn't really make up for the sharp downside we saw in twenty twenty. So, given that this is just kind of filling some of that COVID uh, GDP decline, why is it now investors are getting? all excited about this this yield play yeah i think there's a there's a lot of things kind of at work here so we obviously got this this global gdp uptick uh lockdowns easing but let's not forget the onslaught of monetary stimulus that got put on last year both from a monetary uh perspective and like you saw with uh jay powell today there's no easing up on those on those keeping those rates uh, and then thus yields low uh, we've Absolutely. also got yield um fiscal expansion so we had 900 billion in q4 of last year and then uh, another 1.5 billion probably gonna gonna pass so you've got all of that global uh, i guess this is right thinking about it look you got on that central bank side that that is you know so much kind of stimulus coming through and with that fiscal stimulus this double whammy which is really driving what people are talking about is the the inflation expectations are rising and, and i guess that's one key theme that's that's driving yields higher but obviously stocks are taking it badly here over the last few days do you think this is the top of the equity rally well if you are sam north by the dip but um so yeah i think first of all you need to break down you know why is it bad for stocks essentially High, right. higher yields that is so higher yields um when you're forecasting the cash flows of a of a company okay an asset or even a financial instrument like bonds higher yields and inflation let's say inflation erodes that the future cash flows uh, of those assets when you discount them back to uh, to to today um, and when you look at uh, all the kind of names speculative names that teenagers have been yoloing those deep levered uh, out of the money call options on and there's been a huge speculation you know with, with tesla bitcoin plug power all those renewable energy companies um, those companies are hugely speculative in the sense that investors are paying a huge amount for future earnings right and these earnings are not coming in 2022, not in 2023 in some cases, this may be a 2025 or a 2030, uh, 2030 story. Um, so when those yields start to rise, you know, those cash flows are really uncertain uh, and those infl inflation starts to bite there. So those speculative assets that have a huge proportion of the cash flow generated in the future are really gonna feel the pain. And you're seeing it actually today with Tesla, obviously, uh, plug power, all those renewable energy stories, autonomous taxis, you know, all those really future looking stories, especially a, a good speculative trade recently has been the ARC ETFs. And this is the innovation ETF and genomics. They're really suffering today.
But you can't tell me that a multi-decade secular shift towards renewable energy is being derailed by short-term concern that inflation and yields might be rising. Yeah, this is a secular trend, right? This is not going to go away. But when you're Tesla or your plug power and you're being valued at, okay, let's say the S&P 500 earnings, price to earnings ratio is 15 times. Tesla's at a thousand times, right? Plug power's at something, you know, similar to that. All these speculative names are being valued at such high proportions of earnings. There's kind of that some element of mean reversion in the sense of, okay, let's take a breather here. You know, we've, we've come up a lot. Some of these names are up 500, a thousand percent in the last year. This is not derailing the whole story, but it's causing investors to really go, actually, you know, should we be paying a thousand times? Right. And I think looking at these big indexes like the S&P, like the NASDAQ, you know, it's obviously not just these, you know, very speculative sort of um, long term plays. You've got some solid, you know, giant multinational businesses in these indexes that are that are coming off sharply. I guess it's a slightly different story on that inflation side. Just thinking about companies like the apples of this world that carry a, a huge amount of cash. Uh, so, so rather than future cash flows, it's actually cash that they currently have on the, on the balance sheet. And I guess inflation rising results in the value of that cash being kind of revised down in future years, right? Yeah, I think with the Apples and the Amazons, look, these are not the plug powers. These are generating serious earnings now, right? They're not uh, something to be taken lightly. However, there's a that reflation trade that I'm sure you can tell us a bit more about. There's going to be some asset allocation and some movement away of, okay, you know, we've had a great 10 years in these technology names. Actually, we're seeing a pickup in global growth expectations. Let's take some of our winners here and, and put it towards an Exxon Mobile or a cyclical name that's going to benefit from this global growth expectations. But I guess for the people that haven't watched your very famous podcast, could you talk about the reflation trade and kind of what, what that means? Yeah, just kind of kind of briefly. I mean, the, the whole reflation trade is born around the thesis where 2021 is the emergence from COVID. It's where the global economic system comes out of lockdown. And what you have is several factors all coming together. So that is um, monetary and fiscal stimulus. Okay, you've then got people coming out of lockdown where they've been pent up and frustrated and people are going to get out there and they're going to spend a lot of money because they just want to get out and release and have a good time. Okay, um, and I think what, what and so that's the demand side is going to rise quite sharply, we, we predict. At the same time, when you think about the supply side, we also anticipate that the supply levels are, are too low to perhaps meet this spike in demand on the supply side is low because a businesses have been destocking during this crisis and and b there's been supply chain constraints that that, that are also in place so we're, so we're looking at a demand spike with uh, low supply fueled by fiscal and monetary stimulus and people coming out of the, the jail of their house to kind of just get out there and let loose okay and all of this we're expecting to to drive that 6% upside in GDP in 2021. Now we're expecting that to all result in inflation rising, okay? And so this reflation trade is absolutely all about these cyclical um, or, or just sectors that benefit from, you know, cyclical growth plus, you know, increased in, in inflation plus stuff like increase in the, in the kind of steepness of the yield curve. So you, you've got cyclical stocks, energy stocks love inflation. You've got banks that love that yield curve steepening. And, and this is the kind of play that's really been in the mix, I'd say, for ever since Biden pretty much won the election or even before the election, when it started to become clear he would win, this kind of whole reflation trade began. And obviously then coupled with that back in November, not just the Biden thing, but vaccines you know, started to really come out and, okay, actually we've got some vaccines here that can get, get us out of this COVID crisis in 2021. So that's the reflation trade. But whilst that all sounds very positive for stocks and certainly those ones I mentioned, what you're getting today is the opposite in terms of stocks are selling off. So it doesn't quite marry together with that reflation thesis 
Um, so that's why it's unusual. That's why I think on the one hand, whilst the broader indices are lower, this is a buying opportunity for a reflation trade scenario. But separate to that is, yes, some of these certain names have gone into almost like bubble-like territory where valuations have gone crazy. And I think, you know, inevitably the, the in, to use the inflation, the, 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 the inflated bubble is just uh, kind of deflating quite rapidly on some of those names. Yeah, and I think you're seeing that, right, in the, the composition of the indices, right? You're seeing the NASDAQ down 2.3% and the Dow, for example, down 70 basis points, right? So right. that's that, that secular and the sector composition and the difference between them. I've got a good uh, fact for you is historically, actually, the best so returns for, um, for stocks have actually come when there's low inflation and lower bond yields together. Um, and then there's been inflation ticking up because of the stronger growth expectations. Why? Yeah. Because as you've mentioned a lot of times before, yields are not at 6%, they're at 1.5%, you know, if that. So rates are actually still low enough to support risk assets while playing into the reflation trade uh, scenario. Yeah. Two things to say to wrap just your point about the different indices. Um, so the Dow is better off relatively today. Did you see where the FTSE 100 closed? Up 0.2%. So the FTSE's packed full of energy names and banks, right? So that's that's kind of, and there's no kind of tech and bubble like kind of tech type kind of stories in that index. The other point I wanted to make was then just um, how, you know, I think that in, in the end, this is a lot, this is volatility, right? This is short-term volatility. And in the end, the, you know, the Fed are kind of staying super dovish. And whilst there's a lot of volatility playing out here, you know, I think that, you know, this correction in many ways is quite healthy, ironically, for the kind of more medium-term uptrend that, that indices like the S&P 500 have got going on. So I don't think this is the top for the S&P 500 um, in 2021. Um, and, I, and I think there's still more room uh, to go on the upside, I'd say, but certainly makes it interesting. And uh, we love a bit of price action. Um, Definitely. So, cool. Cool. All well, right. thanks for that, Piers. No worries. Catch you later. Take care.